and jelly spoons to kill you, Matthews. <laughs> oh Lord, here he comes. Yeah. Sorry I'm late there, but held up. Did you really? Uh, yes, but they didn't get away with much. I only had 50p and a copy of 282 on me. Well, Keith, you best get yourself into the kitchen and get a brew on while I finish up the intro. Ladles and Jelly Spoons here at Kai Matthews' YouTube channel, Retro Video Games and Odd Ramblings are our bread and butter. It's a new year and a new month, so it must be time for a new Retro Roundup where we look at some of the video games that were going on sale, hitting the shelves or even the arcades in days gone by. To start off the year though we have a very special 40th birthday to celebrate and that is... Egomania, an action video game released by US Games for the Atari 2600. The objective is to catch eggs in a hat which are thrown by a chicken. At the end of each round the player has the chance to throw the eggs they have caught back at the chicken for bonus points. The speed of the game increases as the player progresses. The game has two difficulties. The easier variation gives the player a larger hat for catching the eggs. For those of you that are new to the channel, hello! I do hope that you're enjoying this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel then please be sure to do so and let me know what you think of this video by clicking the like button or the dislike button and maybe even leaving me a comment down below. There's a good chance I'll reply to you. Now, are there any games from January 1983 that you remember? Fast forwarding now to January 1993 and celebrating their 30th birthday we have... Battle Load Runner, a puzzle platform game released for the NEC PC engine by Hudsoft. Gameplay revolves around travelling through 50 different stages in 11 different time periods, collecting gold without being caught by enemies. The character can climb ropes, ladders, walk on top of enemies, collect power-ups and most importantly dig holes on the left or right of himself. Break Time, the National Pool Tour, a pocket billiards pool video game released for the NES exclusively in North America. There are four unique challenges in the game, 8-ball, 9-ball, rotation and straight pool. All four are allegedly played according to the professional, i.e. world standardised rules. Would you believe the toilet? What? For several months? That must have been one bloody big shit. Shall we have a look at the games from January 1998 now, Pat? And then we can talk about my absence at the end of last year. Let's raise a glass to the following games that mark in their 25th year of being bloody good games. Ready! Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes, a crossover fighting video game developed and published by Capcom. It is the third instalment in the Marvel vs. Capcom series, which features characters from Capcom's video game franchises and characters from Marvel Comics. The game debuted in 1998 and was ported to the Dreamcast in 1999 and the PlayStation in 2000. The game was re-released in 2012 for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 as part of the Marvel vs. Capcom Origins collection. A sequel, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes, was released in 2000. <laughs> A survival horror video game developed and published by Capcom for the PlayStation. 
the player controls Leon S. Kennedy and or Claire Redfield, who must escape Raccoon City after its citizens are transformed into zombies by a biological weapon two months after the events of the original Resident Evil. Jill Sandwich! The gameplay focuses on exploration, puzzles and combat. The main difference from its predecessor are the branching paths, with each player character having unique storylines, partners and obstacles. It was followed up by Resident Evil 3 Nemesis in 1999, and a remake for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC was released in 2019. Regular viewers of the channel, uh, yes Mr B, I'm talking to you, will be unsurprised to hear that Resident Evil 2 appears in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by Tony Mott. And judging by the list of games that we know Mr B has played, I'll tell you lad, you've got quite a list on your hands. Right. Maybe, here's a thought, put down the ukulele for an evening or two, and maybe try, oh I don't know, Shining Force 3 from 1998? But shall we talk about the elephant in the room? That book has great issues. issues. That's right. Now, Tony Lad, I don't know who signed off on the design of the cover and spine of this book, but it's a right bugger. So let's get the camera back over here and look on to January 2003 and a couple of games that are now entering the retro archives as they turn 20 years old. <laughs> The Getaway, an action-adventure open-world video game developed by Team Soho and published by Sony Computer Entertainment for the PlayStation 2. Initially, the release of the game was to coincide with the launch of the PlayStation 2 in 2000, but the game was delayed by 27 months due to the difficulty of recreating large areas of London in high resolution. The Getaway is inspired by British gangster films. Jack! You shouldn't have shown the film to Frank! The game focuses on two characters, each with their own plot. Mark Hammond, an ex-bank robber, and Detective Constable Frank Carter, a police officer in service with the Flying Squad. Both plots run parallel and intersecting before concluding in the final of the game. A sequel entitled The Getaway Black Monday was released in 2004. Give it in! Go round the back, go round the other block, on him. Bad, I'm impressed. Now that's up. Sim City 4, a city building simulation video game developed by Maxis, a subsidiary of Electronic Arts, and the fourth instalment in the Sim City series. The game allows players to create regions of land by terraforming and then to design and build a settlement that can grow into a city. Players can zone different areas of land as commercial, industrial or residential developments, as well as build and maintain public services, transport and utilities. For the success of the city, players must manage its finances, environment and quality of life of its residents. SimCity 4 introduced a day-night cycle and other special effects for the first time in the SimCity series. SimCity 4 was praised for being the first game in the main SimCity series to primarily use a 3D engine to render its graphics. Following the implementation of 3D graphics in SimCity 64 for the Nintendo 64 DD, it received widespread acclaim, won several awards, and was one of the top 10 selling PC games of 2003. However, it was criticised for its difficulty and its demands on computer performance. Uh, SimCity 4 uh, appears in a book of thousand more video games you must play before you die by Tony Mock. So, you know, there's another game to add your list, Mr. B. Well, you should like SimCity 4. You get to design your own city. You can make your own ukulele utopia. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Pat, what have you done with the book? Uh, it's okay, lad. Uh, much like Doctor Who, I have regenerated our Tony's book into the updated 2013 version. Now, cracking on with games that are having a panda pop because they have turned 10 years old. Get your filthy fucking claw off my trailer! DMC Devil May Cry 
an action-adventure video game developed by Ninja Theory and published by Capcom for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC. It is a reboot of the Devil May Cry series, but the game is set in a parallel universe to the mainline Devil May Cry series. The game's story focuses on player character Dante, a young drifter who secretly hunts demons who live amongst and rule over humans. Dante is enlisted by his twin brother Virgil to help slay powerful demons, accumulating in a fight against Mundus, the demon king who murdered Dante's mother and condemned his father to eternal banishment and suffering. DMC received positive reviews from critics upon its release. They praised the gameplay, art style and storyline of the game as well as the redesigned Dante. However, the game was less favourably received by fans of the mainline Devil May Cry series. Get a move on, Ollie boy! Slow down, Mr. Drippy. Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, an action role-playing game developed by Level 5. The game is a significantly enhanced version of Nino Kuni, Dominion of the Dark Dungeon, which originally released for the Nintendo DS in Japan in 2010. It was released for the PlayStation 3 and since 2013 it has also released for the Nintendo Switch in 2019 alongside a remaster for the PlayStation 4 and PC, and in 2022 it was finally released on the Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. Players control Oliver, a young boy who sets out on a journey in search of a way to resurrect his recently deceased mother. The game is played from a third person perspective and its world is navigated on hey foot, Mom. by boat or on a dragon. Whilst players navigate Thanks, Oliver Just through the game's the world, here. other characters can be controlled during battles against enemies. During these battles, players may use magic so, abilities and creatures known as familiars, which can be captured and tamed. Um, a sequel, Nino no Kuni 2, huh? The Revenant Kingdom, well, was released in March of 2018. I to practice for my concert in the morning. Oh yeah? So, you'll be in bed kinda early, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I suppose I will. Oh, you will, huh? <laughs> will you stop? Uh, call me cynical, but I don't think our loyal viewers, hello Mr. B, will have heard of any of those games. I'm sure they don't appear in Tony's book, which is a real shame as they are certainly both worthy of spots in the book. But if you at home disagree with me, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to consider subscribing if you're not already. If you want to go that extra mile though, consider sharing this out with your nearest and dearest. Ah, oh, because nothing says I'm thinking of you more than three blokes and a small tiger waxing lyrical about old video games in an underground bunker orbiting the planet. You know if you just played that clip on its own, people might think you're having a stroke. So, I'll just leave you with this. If the stealth bomber crashes in a forest, would it make a sound? Cheerio, see you Friday.